I'm Chief Executive of the National Anti-Vivisection Society. We're the world's um, first um, anti-vivisection organization. We've been in existence over 100 years. And uh, we also fund non-animal scientific and medical research. We understand that millions of animals are used um, for animal experimentation. What exactly are these animals used for? Well, they're used in a, a range of um, experiments, whether it's um, academics using them for fundamental research, where they're just trying to find something out. They don't have a particular purpose for the experiment right. in mind. Um, they're used for um, product safety testing. Um, they're used for um, safety testing of um, things like batch testing of things like vaccines. And that's where the majority of animals are used. Um, over 3 million in the UK and 100 million worldwide. Right. Um, the point that we have made about animal research is that there are fundamental species differences between humans and other animals. And so any animal experiment isn't going to tell you reliably what kind of outcome you might see in a human being. And that's when you sometimes get uh, these uh, the news of a, a drug that has gone on to injure or, or even kill human beings. Absolutely. Because it was judged as safe in uh, an animal test. And so that's why we need to shift away from 100-year-old technology, animal testing, a very um, crude um, and cruel way of trying to test a product to something more sophisticated, which is the advanced um, scientific and technological methods that we advocate. Does your organisation itself also provide scientific evidence to the scientists and to the government? We do. Um, one of the key things that the National Antiviral Section Society has done over the last 20 years or so is to invest in non-animal scientific and medical research and also in um, producing scientific briefings for governments and legislators on ways to replace the use of animals and also to um, show and explain. We have our own scientists who can explain how non-animal methods, the tissues and cell cultures, um, the computer technology using computer modeling, um, analytical techniques, things like new, new technologies like toxic toxicogenomics, um, accelerator mass spectrometry, which you use where you give um, uh, you give volunteers tiny, tiny doses of a product, so minute right. they can't hurt them, and then you analyse the effects that's had on them, and then you get actually proper results because you get results in human beings, in human beings, than in yeah. animals. So all of these new um, scientific techniques uh, that we're we've been promoting and funding are what we're putting forward to governments now as a way to replace animal tests. Fact is animal research is unreliable. There are fundamental differences between animals and humans. It's um, something that we, we do because we've been doing it for a hundred years. It's time to change. Absolutely. And do you, feel, do you find that the government is taking notice of this? Do you feel that they do think that, yes, we can use non-animal techniques to base a research on? They, they certainly are. I think um, governments in the UK um, a, and in the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers, um, where this debate has been hotly debated in the last five years or so because we're going to see a change in legislation, they are seeing that the non-animal uh, research methods are the way forward. The, the, the cutting edge, the leading edge of development in science and in technology is by using the new techniques, the computer modeling techniques, yes. the sophisticated techniques. And animal experiments are a thing of the past, and gov governments do know this, and they see this, but they are still being advised by a minority of scientists right. who still cling to using animals. They've built their careers on animal research, and they don't want to let that go. Absolutely. Scientifically, people should not want to use um, animals from unknown sources. But then the second problem that you have is that you, the more you refine animals and provide them for research, for example, a lot of the um, genetic manipulation of animals yes. and um, the purpose breeding of animals, what you get is a certain man, animal, series of animals where you're trying to standardise the way those animals might respond. But people aren't standardised. Absolutely. We're varied. 
and we have a whole genetic mix there. So fundamentally, you still you you come, It's like a loop of problems that our yes. research creates a loop of problems. It's like an artificial arrangement, really, isn't it? It is absolutely. Yeah. Um, artificially induced dis disease um, behaves differently in animals in laboratories from the way disease behaves in the real world. So what we really need is sophisticated techniques which can tell us what happens. Where do you think these techniques are predominantly used at the moment? In which country would you say? Um, certainly in the UK we're using them more and more. Um, in some countries in Europe um, the non-animal research techniques um, are being quite well used. The biggest problem is that many countries in Europe, uh, their science and technology and uh, their, their animal research um, base is way, way behind countries such as the United Kingdom. Right. And so uh, you have this imbalance in Europe where you have a few countries who are very sophisticated in their approach to replacement of animals. Yes. You have some countries who barely know what replacement techniques are. Right. So we're trying to bring those countries up to speed. Um, but certainly in terms of uh, advancing their science base and their technology, the answer for the solution for them is to use advanced techniques rather than animals because that just takes them into a, a backward technology. Absolutely. And in the UK, we have a national centre for the replacement and reduction and, uh, of the use of animals in research and they also um, look at refinement te techniques which continue using animals but use less animals. Clearly for us we think the most important thing is the replacement of uh, animals. But also in the European Union there is a centre for um, uh, looking at uh, replacement methods and comparing them with uh, animal research and uh, authorising new replacement methods. Um, for introduction um, into the scientific mix and into the, uh, the government's approval program for right. new, um, drugs and other products. Excellent. And Many of these pictures that you see that we show are from our undercover investigation and what we're trying to contrast is what the government is telling the public on the one hand yes. and what the animals are actually experiencing on the other hand. From, from what I was reading, um, they were basically saying that the Home Office has actually reduced the controls on animal research. Um, is that what do you think is happening? They're certainly going through, in the last few years, they've gone through a program of deregulation. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they've increased the number of um, licenses they're awarding to establishments, but, but, but at the same time they're reducing the number of inspectors. They're also awarding licenses much more quickly than ever before. Licenses are being processed um, in a few days or fast in track. a few weeks, mm. fast track licensing. So the, the deregulation is pretty horrific because again it means that what the Home Office Inspectorate is looking at is just one way of conducting scientific and medical research. The people who have built their careers on animal research are pushing the government in a certain direction in terms of their licensing. People with experience of animal research are the people who are running the Home Office Department, um, which is issuing mm. the licenses. So you have this cycle of no real, no real review Absolutely. of what happens, no real review of animal research as a whole or the research effort, effort as a whole, so that new scientists who use new methods can, can be drawn in and say, well, actually, there's a better way of doing this. And I think that's um, one of the problems with the way the Home Office administers the legislation. It's full of people who have always done it that way. Had an interest. And they're talking yeah. to people who have a vested interest Absolutely. in doing it in a particular way.